Yeah, hi everyone. Jason here, Robot Lawn Miles Australia. Um, today we're going to go through uh, a particular issue that can occur with a, uh, with a works Landroid machine. Uh, it doesn't happen very often, but it really can happen. We've probably had about sort of maybe half a dozen cases in Australia now that we know of. Um, but I just want to get it out there so people can actually help diagnose uh, the problem themselves rather than have to try and get, uh, get, get assistance from tech support like ourselves. So basically what I've got here, I've got three robots here, here uh, that are set up um, and they've actually all got different firmware versions on it. So I'll go through that in a minute exactly why. Um, but what I've done is I've set up a perimeter wire here, just a standard perimeter wire. It's about 10 metres by 4 metres thereabouts. Um, I'll put an image on the screen here to show you what, what we've actually got here right now. Um, and then after that, what we've done is we've actually put a second wire all around the outside of that wire. So again, I'll show you an image on the screen there now. So this secondary wire, what it's actually doing is it's simulating uh, a metal fence or the Rio bar inside a concrete slab or something like that but anything that's actually running alongside the boundary wire that's conductive. So basically what really is happening with the issue is that, is that the, the boundary wire, the, the works land wire boundary wire is actually got a signal running through it and it's inducting that signal into the secondary you know, fence or um, you know, like I said, Rio bar or something like that that's around the outside of your boundary wire. Um, and it causes interference and it causes the robot to do some very unusual things. So firstly what I'll do is I want to show you the actual issue itself. Um, so I'll just show you on the screen here now. So all I'm going to do here with this, this is a WR140 model here. Uh, and I'm going to start this model and just show you what the actual issue is. Okay. Hmm. So you can see that we've got the first boundary wire and then the second boundary wire after it. So it just goes over the first boundary wire and then runs into what I've, yeah, basically would be your fence or whatever it might be. The robot then tries to get out and quite often it does get out and it just, just has this time as well. So it's managed to get itself out okay. Um, but typically what really happens is that the robot actually, I'll just put this to the side here so I can show you on this camera. What usually happens is the, the robot will go across the boundary wire, slows down as it gets to the boundary wire and then it goes fast as it goes over to the boundary wire and it hits you know, your fence or whatever it might be, okay? So then what it normally does is it'll actually reverse up. Um, it'll try and turn left or right and try and do something and it just can't really work out what it should do. Then it'll hit go forward again. And quite often it'll just sit there and actually just bump in and out, in and out, in and out of the, of the fence line. Sometimes it'll get in between the two wires and it'll actually follow its way along the, tw along the two wires and might get stuck in there. Um, and other times it'll actually just manage to get its, get its way out. But just the fact that it's actually crossing the first boundary wire and actually hitting the fence, um, that's the issue we're trying to uh, trying to establish um, and, and, and trying to eradicate. Okay. So the the issue that we've come across, so trying to duplicate this issue or trying to replicate it here, what we have found is that moisture actually has a significant effect uh, on how much the uh, the boundary wire actually does induct into the fence line or whatever it might be that, that's causing your issue. But in our case, it's the secondary wire that we've put around. Um, so the wetter the area, the more induction we actually get, so the worse the problem gets as it gets wet. Um, and as it dries out, the actual problem goes away. Um, what we've actually found, even with our test set up here, our demonstration here, is that you know, later in the day after the sun's been out for a while, is that this issue doesn't actually occur and, we're, and we, we can't replicate the fault at all. Um, so moisture definitely has an effect on it. Um, the other thing that has effect on this issue is the firmware version. Now, Currently, again, this is why I've got the, got, the three, got the three robots here. So I've got a WR150E on the end over here. Uh, it's running firmware version 3.26, which is now one of the older versions of firmware. Um, I've then got a WR149 model here that it's running a version, uh, firmware version 3.28, uh, which is the version that actually came out in that machine. Uh, and then uh, we've also got a WR140 here um, that I just demonstrated a second ago that's actually running firmware version 4. Point, sorry 3.30 which is the latest firmware it only came out about probably two or three weeks ago thereabouts uh, here in Australia. So what I'd like to do is uh, basically show you each one of them. So I, again I will just run the, uh, the, uh, the 140 again so you can see that it definitely crosses over the boundary wire. Now remember the boundary wire is just there, you should be able to see it on the camera there. So it goes in, slows down and then crosses over the boundary wire. Okay. Then I'll grab the uh, the WR140 model and we'll turn them on. It's going to take a little bit of a little bit of delay here getting these things up and running for you. Right. And of course, somebody's car driving past has got some lovely music playing for us. 
Okay, so the WR149, I'll just now start that and see how it, how it affects it. So it comes in, approaches the wire, slows down and straight across the wire, okay? So that's the WR149 model running firmware version 3.28. Remember this is 3.30. Then I'll bring in the, uh, bring in the WR150 model and we'll turn it on again. Hmm. Okay, hit start, okay. And it comes into the wire there, and it stops just short of the wire, just short of the secondary wire, and it works okay. So, basically, what typically seems to be the story here is that, and we've duplicated this probably four or five times now, is that firmware version 3.26, it is affected by the same issue, it's just not, as, not affected as much. It's only when you go into the firmware version 3.28 and 3.30 that you seem to get a, a, basically a lot more issues with it crossing over the wire. So people that are sort of, you know, starting to see these issues in their robots now, um, but didn't before, you know, they're, they're basically sort of blaming the firmware that that's the issue. It's not really the issue. The issue was always there. You always had this induction issue there. It's just that the firmware versions now are, are far more sensitive to it because they're changing the way the robots actually operate on the, on the boundary wire. So hopefully with any luck, yeah, in the next firmware versions, uh, they should be able to hopefully reduce the, uh, reduce the effect of this. So the other thing I want to show you is I want to try and show you actually how to diagnose the issue and see the actual issue on the robot. So if you've got any robot that's actually got a, any Land Rover robot that's got, a, that's got a display screen on it, uh, which doesn't include the WR139 because it doesn't have the display screen the same as the uh, 140, 149 or 150. What you can do, and again, I will, uh, I'll just show you here on the screen here. Uh, hopefully you can see, where are we? It's not, not getting very good. It's very difficult to see today. There we go, I think we've got it there now, okay. So on the 140 models and the 150 models, what you can do is you can go across to the right you can go into settings, go all the way down to the bottom, and it's called Diagnose. You go into Diagnose, and then go across to the right one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. And this actually brings up the actual wire sensors in the front of the robot. Okay, so if you look there, and currently you can see that both the signals, the signal strength at the top there, says negative 96% on both left and right sensor. So that is, that's your right sensor on the right-hand side there and your left sensor on the left-hand side there. Now, if I push this forward just a little bit further, you'll see that they actually both go positive. Now, that positive um, is reading the actual second wire. So if I just zoom out there a little bit, you see there's one wire here, one wire there. So that's actually reading the far wire, which is not connected to anything as a, as a positive signal. And when, once it comes back again, it goes negative. There we go, they've both gone negative now. And once we come back over the boundary wire again, so now we're now we're back over the, back inside the uh, the original boundary. It goes back into a positive. So I'll just show you how to do the same thing on the W149, which is exactly the same menu. It's just a different uh, just a different interface. So on the W149, see if we can get this in a position where you can see it. So on the W149, all we do is turn the dial to the side to get to get to the settings menu and we press the dial down to actually select it. We then turn the dial all the way around till you get down to the bottom to diagnose. We select that and then we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to the right and then exactly the same screen. Now what you'll see on this screen is that it'll actually be affected a lot, a lot, a lot more. So we've now got, so they're both positive signals at the moment and it stays positive, it's gone, it went negative there just for a second and then it went positive again. It stays positive the whole way through. So this is actually basically a good portion over the wire is actually showing a, uh, a positive signal instead of a negative signal. So let's explain, let's explain what that actually means. So normally with, your, with the boundary wire of a works Land Road, you've got a single wire. Um, you turn on, the, turn on the actual base station signal and everything inside the boundary wire is a positive signal. So those signal readings that you were just looking at a second ago, they'll actually be a positive signal. So I'll put a picture on here and show you. So everything inside the boundary wire is positive. Everything outside the boundary wire is negative. Now, what's actually happening 
with this induction issue where it's where you're inducting the signal into something else like a fence or another wire or whatever it might be um, it's getting very confused so again I'll throw a picture up here so everything inside the original uh, Landroid wire is positive and everything that's outside the secondary wire is negative but you can see that little section between the two wires um, which is between uh, the, uh, the, the Landroid's boundary wire and whatever whatever is being inducted in the fence so in our case it's the wire but in between those two wires you can see that there's a, there's a negative signal and a positive signal so it's negative when it's really close to the to the to the Landroid's boundary wire but then it goes positive as soon as it starts going out and that's what the robot's getting confused with it's going into that section and then all of a sudden the signal strength uh, in the uh, in the Landroid is going oh I don't know if I'm positive I don't know if I'm negative and it gets very confused and it really it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do when it reads a positive signal, it thinks it's inside the wire. When it reads a negative signal, it thinks it's outside the wire. It really is that simple. So basically, that's sort of why this issue is occurring. It's that, it's that, it's that space between the, two, between the two items or the two wires or the wire and the fence, whatever, again, whatever it might be. I'm going to make that very stress that very clearly that it really can be anything that's actually causing the induction um, you know, to, to, uh, to cause this interference basically between the two sections. And, now, the very first thing that most people say when, they, when I try and explain this to them, they say, well, hang on, you know, my fence doesn't go all the way around the outside of my boundary wire, it only goes over a portion of it, uh, whatever it might be, or it's along the back fence only, and the rest of it's, not, the rest of it's a timber fence, or whatever, whatever it might be. It doesn't need to be one big continuous loop around the outside of the wire. It just needs the electrical signal to be continuous. So that really can mean absolutely anything. Um, I, honestly, it's... We, we will basically you'll never you'll never work out exactly how the signal is getting around and the through things but this signal can go through anything it'll, it'll go through water through ponds through pipes through you know through your shed through your house anything that's conductive it can possibly make itself a continuous loop um, that's essentially what will cause you know this issue to to, to arise and so Basically, the only thing you can really do is basically test it, like I've just shown you how to diagnose it and actually test it with the robot so you can see the signal on the, on the robot uh, screen. Because if you do see this, this sort of this occurrence where it's going, where you're getting a positive signal on the outside of the boundary wire, then this is your problem. It's just a matter of finding out exactly why it's the problem. Um, the one other thing that can cause this sort of thing to happen, and again, it's still sort of the same thing, um, but if you end up with two breaks uh, in your boundary wire or two, two, two um, joints in your boundary wire that end up going down to ground because they're not insulated perfectly or they're not waterproof. Um, and if you've got one joint at one end of your fence line and one joint at the other end of your fence line and if they've got damage at those two ends then the signal can leak out from the wire, go into the fence line and then along the fence line and basically do exactly the same thing as what we're talking about now. Okay? But at the end of the day, if you get your robot and you put it into the diagnostic screen and you show that, the, that it's getting a positive signal on the outside of the wire, then the issue is absolutely 100% to do with your installation and the wire, not to do with the robot. So it's something I can't stress enough. So fixing the issue. So there is a really, really, really easy fix to this. Um, and actually, I didn't actually get myself very well prepared for this video, but the easiest fix to this problem is to electrically isolate the, uh, the, 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 the circuit on the outside of the boundary wire. So if it's your fence or whatever it might be, um, it's going to be very, very difficult to achieve this. Uh, but basically what you need to do is you need to, you need to achieve an electrical isolation along that fence line that you've, that's actually causing the issue. So if it's a colour bond fence, Yes, it is very difficult, but you would have to actually disassemble part of the fence and put some kind of insulator in the fence to try and stop it from being electric continuous all the way along. Um, if it's a wire fence, uh, yeah, putting some kind of insulation between the uh, between two wires in the middle there, but just breaking that circuit because if you can break that circuit, then the uh, then the signal just can't be inducted. And I'll show that to you right now. So I'll just take my knife here and I'll cut this outside wire like such. And I'll show you exactly. So I'll just show you there that I'll just show you there. That's where I cut the wire there, just beside the uh, beside the pallet here. And we come and come across to our to our 149 here again. And hopefully we can get it to uh, so you get, so you can see it because it is quite sunny here today. Beautiful sunny Queensland, and you'll see that is now showing a negative signal all the way up to 
so that's all the way to the to the to the uh, focus on this thing is terrible all the way to the uh, to the pallet go back in here again so that's negative it's a negative signal I hope you can see that oh, I can barely see it myself so I'm sure you can't there we go negative signal negative signal and it doesn't turn positive until it gets back inside the wire so right now that issue is completely gone now if I bring this wire this, this robot back turn it on uh, we should hopefully if everything works as it should do when you're taking videos um, the robot will just operate like normal stops at the boundary wire and continues on so that the problem the problem is eradicated so the only other issue, other thing you can look at is that you can bring the wire further back from the fence line obviously that's not ideal because you want the robot to cut as close to the fence line as you can um, that may not eradicate the problem but it might it might lessen the account that the, the, the times that it happens because you might find that even if you move the wire you know, seven or eight hundred millimeters back from the fence line that after a heavy rain everything's really wet you still might have the same issue it really might might, might still continue um, and the other thing you can try um, is to if you've got a WR140 a WR139 or a WR150 um, you can roll the firmware back to 3.26 now I need to stress this very very clearly you cannot roll back the WR149 to version 3.26 because that firmware is not compatible with the robot um, that firmware was actually that firmware was developed before that robot was made um, and it does not suit the robot and it makes the robot completely unusable um, and then you, you, you literally will have to send the robot back to us to be reset because you cannot fix it after you after you've uh, installed 3.26 on a WR149 so like I say if you've got a WR139 a WR140 or a WR150 um, then you can roll them back to 3.26 and in your app you can actually turn off automatic updates and you can hold it on 3.26 uh, until we get uh, an, a future version of firmware that, uh, that has less issues with this problem um, but like I said 3.26 is less susceptible to the problem it doesn't eradicate it it's still there it still happens with 3.26 it just happens a lot less so I think that's sort of it I hope I've made this as clear as possible for people um, if you've got any questions at all please you know, throw them in the comments that we can actually so I can answer you um, and if you need to uh, get in contact with us, you certainly can. You can send us an email at sales at robotlawnmowers.com.au. Uh, you can find out a lot more information on our website. Just go to www.robotlawnmowers.com.au uh, and you can find out other information and short videos we've got on Facebook and TikTok and, and Instagram. Just search for, search for Robot Lawnmowers Australia. Thanks for watching.